Music, industry talk, stories, equipment and more. We are Crossfader and this is Off 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 Off, off the Record. Off the Record. Off the Record. Okay, welcome back to the podcast Off the Record with myself, Jamie Hartley. I'm here with two of our other usual hosts. We've got James Holland. How are we doing? And Danny James. Yo, yo. And we've actually got a guest with us today. We've got Joe LaBelle right here in the studio. Yes, so yes. before I get stuck into who Joe LaBelle is and what he's all about, um, just quickly, we've just got back from ADE in Amsterdam. It's our first time that we went to the festival as a team. Um, Danny, Holland, how did you find it? I found it eye-opening, amazing. Oh, wow. I smelt colours. It was brilliant. <laughs> it was great. His first experience of the coffee shop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, that's a great way to see Carl Cox live. I had the time of my life. We met some important people, uh, did some amazing things of which he's going up on YouTube at the moment. So I'm sure our audiences will yeah. see what we got up to. And it was really good. I love it. If you're new to the podcast, then the last two episodes are actually live from ADE. We yep. interviewed and spoke to TLM. Mojax and TLM. Yeah. yeah. What good guys. Amazing insight. Yeah. Uh, Did you have fun, Danny? Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. yeah. I've been to Amsterdam before, but I loved it. It was, <laughs> um, it was great for just to like... You build up relationships with so many people online and you kind of have this image of them in your head and then when you actually get to meet them, it's kind of like yeah. bridging that gap. It's really good. Yeah, it's cool. face to face. Yeah. Now, any regular listeners of this show will know that we're all about helping the new DJ, helping DJs that are working in the, in the industry at the moment and providing as much insight and value as possible to those DJs. Um, so we've brought Joe LaBelle in. Now, Joe LaBelle is a friend of mine from way back when, when I used to be DJing full-time in clubs. Oh. Um, Joe is absolutely smashing it at the moment in the club scene and going from height to height next level to next level he's gone from your bedroom dj to the resident dj to now doing guest spots around the world so he's done that progression and i just thought this guy is a perfect person to talk to he's local to us over here in the uk in leeds and we've got him in the studio to break down some of his success and figure out if we can pass that knowledge on to the listeners here so joe welcome to the studio welcome thanks to the podcast a lot. thanks well, a lot guys happy to be here yeah thank you um so just let our audience know it's best to come from you than from me what where did your story begin and you know give us a bit of a timeline as to where you are at now right okay so um i'd say probably i started djing just as a hobby about 12 years ago yeah because i'm i'm 27 now sadly but um still, <laughs> yeah. still, still a bit younger than me <laughs> but yeah so i started as many do i think just in a bedroom uh one of my mates bedrooms he had he had a set of cdjs i used to go around and um practice on them with a couple of lads from leicester that's where i grew up nice Shout out Jack and Harry, yeah, man. if you're watching. But yeah, uh, we used to go around just to, to see back in the CD days on CDJs and just try and blend bits and bobs together. It was like dubstep and grime back then. We're like, yeah, the, yeah, I remember that era. Yeah, we're like the big sort of big two, and they and they worked together. So I don't know if they were supposed to, but we used to mix them together anyway. And um, then yeah, just fast forwarding a bit, bought myself a little controller because it was the only thing I could afford. What brand was it? It was a Hercules. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I got my boys at Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> Did it plug into Serato? Or um, can you remember? I can't remember. Don't, don't think it will have done. I don't think it. Don't I'm pretty sure that Starlight's the only one that works with Serato. Right. Yeah, some dodgy software probably on a, <laughs> on, a, on a sort of Windows laptop that probably DJ shouldn't eight. have been DJ enough, probably. <laughs> um, and then obviously eventually uh, saved a bit of money, got some CDJs, um, which I then used to plug into Serato. Nice. And, so yeah. just going back to when you first started, first question I've got is, did you, how did it start? Was it that you had just a love for playing with music or did you have an end goal in sight? Like, I, you know what, I want to start playing in clubs, I want to start playing for friends or was it just something fun for you and your mates to do? Yeah, I think at the beginning it was, it literally was just a fun hobby. Like I used, I loved music. My yeah. family, I'm from a very musical family. We all love music. Um, and it was more just like, I, I, I used to be quite a phasey person. I used to pick up, you know, try and take photos for a while, try and do this for a while, this and that sport. And I never really stuck at anything. And yep. then DJ and I just did a couple of times and just, it became like an obsession. It so, sunk its teeth into yeah. it. Gave you the, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We've all felt that, haven't we? Like yeah, you guys definitely. were very similar um, in the way yeah. that you started as well. Especially so. it pays you money as well. Like when you, yeah, yeah, but this, it was years before I was making it. Oh, was it? Was it? Yeah. I mean? it was normally people get hooked before. on it when they're like, oh wait, hang on a this is <laughs> yeah. a hobby that pays. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. How were you starting your music back then? 
It's how was a source. LimeWire. Yeah. I, I was going to say, am I allowed to say? <laughs> yeah. Every nook and cranny yeah, of the deep, it, dark we, corners of the internet. <laughs> we've, we've gone into this in previous episodes, but right, it's okay. just good to know how far technology's come because obviously now we're talking about things like streaming and all sorts. But back then, you know, you're a kid, you're trying to just mm. source music. Sounds like Joe was kicking his mum off the phone. <laughs> yeah. 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 To get on the dial up. <laughs> yeah, we had like a, we had like a f- sort of 10 meter cable that used to go from a little you know, a little port near my front door all the way, all the way through the house. <laughs> all the way through yeah. the house, up to the modem. Up to the sort of modem. And then, and then yeah, you used to download bits and bobs off LimeWire and stuff. And half the time you'd think, yes, I've just got that brand new tune. And then it would just be that guy saying, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you lot remember that. But, or like Bill random ad- adverts for sunglasses and stuff like that. And I was yeah. like, shit, man. Oh, halfway yeah, through, I remember that. Halfway through Usher Yeah, it's like, www.urbanbeats.com. Uh, uh, there was one that I used to have all the time when I downloaded a tune. It was like, this MP3 download is illegal. <laughs> it just like, stop up. I know, it. God damn it. <laughs> just leave it out. <laughs> yeah. I I bet that's just people in the bedroom like powering people off like oh, yeah. I, I can get the internet now yeah these, yeah these uh, illegal downloaders yeah. um okay so what would you say your style was back then and what's your style now and has your music influence and genres changed throughout your career or have you stuck to a certain path throughout what would you say um i do think there's been a bit of a shift sorry it's okay just take a drink of water but yeah um I do think there's been a bit of a shift when I first, because I, I genuinely do love quite a lot of different genres of music. When I started, I'd love house music, dubstep, grime, yep. even bits of drum and bass, hip hop always, and and all those different things. And at, at the start, it was like, my DJing style was probably a bit gimmicky. It was very house party. And yeah, yeah. it would be like, oh, Joe just mixed them in uh, Arctic Monkeys house classic into a, uh, into a house classic, you know, yeah, an Arctic yeah, Monkeys yeah. tune yeah. into a house classic. And, yeah. and it, it yeah. sounds amazing, but I think as you realize, as you get a bit older, you realize perhaps there's not many clubs that's going to have a, uh, a policy that'll allow you to do that. Yeah. So. But how do you feel that you obviously had to learn a certain amount of skills to be able to mix those different styles of music together? And do you think that helped you? Um, get to where you are? Do you think it helped open up more bookings because of your confidence with different genres of music? Yeah, 100%. I mean, like you say, is the, the just just being able to work that out in your mind that you can that you can mix something mm. from genre A into something from genre B sort yeah. of seamlessly it takes a bit of skill eventually. Yeah. Well, there wasn't much skill when I first started doing it, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is a skill to it. As definitely. you get better, yeah. yeah. And obviously we're a DJ school and we teach all these tricks and skills and things along the way, but how, you know, back then, probably pre any online DJ school or anything like that, how did you pick up new tricks and how did you learn these skills? Um, was it a case of watching other DJs? Did, did you have a, a tutor of any kind, a mentor, or how did you kind of pick up these skills, would you say? Yeah, that's a good question. When I think about it, it's so hard now, like looking at YouTube and seeing what you guys are doing. Mm. And I just think there's just so much. Like, yeah. I don't even know if there was so YouTube. much information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't even. Probably pre YouTube. It was probably pre YouTube when I was starting, or, or I didn't have an internet connection fast enough for YouTube if it was if it was there. But um, yeah, so uh, it was a mix. It was a mix between sort of shadowing a couple of other guys, but none of us really knew what we were doing. I, well, I didn't yeah. really have a figure that was yeah that was you know really excellent that yeah. i could learn from so it was kind of just like mm. yeah there wasn't really the an end goal just, yeah it was kind of you just keep doing your thing and you keep learning along the way and suddenly you, you get inspiration or yeah. some something just you see another dj do something and you think oh i can adapt that i've, I've got an idea that sparks some creativity for me that's that 100%. definitely happened for me when i was going through sort of working in clubs i'd definitely be watching other DJs that were either warming up, coming on after, playing back to back with, and their style of mixing might be totally different to mine. Um, but I got a lot of inspiration from that mm-hmm. as well. I don't think that should be like a tip just for beginners. Like no. I'm doing what I'm doing. And every time we have a guest booking, I'm stood by the side of them going, okay, let's, let's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. let's see what you're all about. Let's, okay, I like yeah. that. I'm going to take that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to learn that. I'm going to move it on. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah just picking things up. You never, you can never stop learning. That's the great thing about DJing. Mm. Even the best still learn something new every day. Yeah. Yeah. You just got to keep pushing yourself and trying different things, aren't you? So my next question is, obviously, you're, you're passionate for this thing. You're, you're learning your craft. You're honing it. But then what was the next step? Did, it, did you just suddenly get loads of gigs in clubs? How did you go from just playing with your mates in a bedroom on some of their CDJs to then actually like taking this thing seriously? Where, what was the transition there? So um, I went to uni, which, yep. which was a, probably 
quite sort of instrumental in what's happened since to be honest um i got used to playing at people's flat parties and house parties as i got as i was in first year um eventually you, then you you know as you meet it's like everyone says it's all about networking and the more people you meet at these parties and mm. they'll end up then going to a club you'll go with them you'll meet perhaps the promoter do you know what i mean all, yeah, all yeah, that yeah. kind of thing so when i first when i first um got to uni uh, i would i would play at any party that anyone would be having, uh, you know, I'd turn up with a controller and set it up on an ironing board yep. uh, <laughs> or like any, any there. horizontal surface yeah. was mine. And I'd be <laughs> like, right, let's, let's go. Um, would you say that you turned up to parties without them asking you to play? Did you turn up with a controller under arm and be like, this is my spot. I'm, I'm providing the tunes. Or, sure, were, I mean, you, were, you, were you as arrogant as that? I, sure. wouldn't, I wouldn't say that, but that's probably yeah. to has happened. <laughs> <laughs> Show me the kitchen worked up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, our listeners can probably relate to this a lot because I, I, I can imagine a lot of people that follow Crossfader and, and are learning with Crossfader are at that point where, you know, they're playing a lot of parties for friends and they're playing a lot of, you know, intimate little things like that and taking the controllers here, there and everywhere to try and get any opportunity. Um, so then how did that transition? transition from you doing that to then playing in clubs was it just chance and just keeping at it and sort of the networking expanding yeah i mean it that probably was ch- obviously you make your own look the more times you're there knocking a door you know the, the more likely it is that eventually yeah, yeah. one's going to open i was just at every single party i was just trying to become this like really well-known person on on my sort of campus or you know whatever yep. and um eventually it just got to a point where because all the people I was playing to were the people that were going to the events yeah, that yeah, were yeah. in the cities and the, you know so on the nights. So they, they eventually it would just it would just filter through. People would say, yeah. "Oh, you know what? I've just come from a party. There's a guy called Joe DJ in there." They tell their friend who happens to run this night, or they tell their friend who happens to own this own this events company. And it literally was just just persistence and persistence. Yeah, eventually, yeah. somebody said, "Would you like to play a Sunday here for sixty pounds?" And I was like. Why not? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think a great learning point to take from that is you started to build an audience before you approach clubs yourself necessarily. You started to build an audience around you of people that liked what you were doing, like the music you were playing, and and they did the promotion for you because no, you know you 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 were the party starter for them, and they wanted to see that in a club. So they naturally then started bigging you up, and that's a really really valuable tactic for any beginner DJ out there. I think, you know, start to think about your audience very early on because 10 people of your circle of friends talking about you and bigging you up to some of their 10 friends and vice versa can help you grow massively. Um, I think that's maybe more valuable than literally going straight up to a promoter and be like, Hey, book me because if someone else is saying it, then, you know, the promoter's thinking, well, Mm. this person's coming to my venue. They want to hear this certain DJ. We should get them in. For sure. And also just from like a commercial aspect, I think, People that know that they're that a DJ that's coming along has got forty friends who are backing him. You know that a yeah. lot of the time they're, they're going to see pound signs. I think yeah. the first gig I got put on, I didn't even arrange it, but I just mentioned it to a couple of people, and there was like all, all my friends came, and, and it was like the best thing ever for me. And the club was probably thinking the best thing ever as well because yeah. they had an extra 30, 40 bodies. Um, I don't know why I'm pretending I've got 30, 40 friends. There was, <laughs> there was three of them. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. And then I think in there. those first year, like in your first year of uni as well, that you can really harness that opportunity and think there's a lot of people around me all in a similar position. We've all just got to the city yeah. and you can create a large group of friends that then will narrow down by the end of the year. And then into year two, you get much better friends. But at that very, it's a prime point for DJs. If you are going to uni in a big city, especially, you know, you can really take that to, to, to create a big circle of people to support you and, mm, and, yeah, and come around you. Um, so then you, you got a few gigs. Did you straight away become a resident DJ and, or were you working Monday to Friday and trying to pick up gigs on the side as well as being a student? How, where, when did it turn into a full-time thing? Yeah, there were a couple of, couple of chapters to that story. I mean, like first, firstly, I went from the couple of gigs that I did manage to pick up to then being invited back as a resident, which was good because you learn, you learn the most in the clubs. So all the experience I had at these house parties yeah. pretty much goes out the window. You start to learn again. Um, so I did a lot of residencies for a little while, picked up, you know, one by one, one, maybe one every six months, I'd get a new one or every mm. sort of time the, the term refreshed or anything, they, they'd be like, Oh, can you do this Monday? Can you yeah, do this yeah. Wednesday? And slowly that builds up. I was getting excited all of the time. I was still at university. Um, Eventually, I've decided that I wasn't feeling university at all. 
so I went from being at uni and doing doing gigs, uh, a couple of gigs, to maybe two, three gigs a week alongside uni, to then just quitting uni and only having those two or three, which back then wasn't financially viable. So yeah. I then had to get a full time job. Um, at the and did you make that decision because you wanted to pursue your dream of DJing? Yeah. And it was kind of like, you know what, I'm going to go all all in with this. I didn't want to move back home. Um, so I thought, right, well, how can I afford to stay here? Because yeah. I felt like I was on the precipice of something something good. So I was yeah, like, yeah. Mm. how can I afford to stay here? Right, okay, get yourself a full-time job. Then you can still work. I, I, mean, I, I, I couldn't do it now, but I worked like 10-hour days, Monday to Thursday, so I did a, like a full full time job, but over four days, and then I I'd finish work at seven eight p.m. on the Thursday night, go straight to work, DJing Thursday night until four in the morning, and you know and I'd, I'd I'd work as a DJ for Thursday Friday Saturday, and yeah, as a customer customer service advisor <laughs> Monday to Thursday. No, but that's it. I know a lot of people again that's listening that that will be in that full time position yeah. Yeah. and but want to pursue the passion and i think the big takeaway from there is you've got to have that determination and you've got to stick at it and really grind through those hard months even years of just pursuing it because eventually it, it pays will break off. and we're about to talk about that but you know if you'd have just given up on it then suddenly you'd still be in that full-time role and you wouldn't be doing what you're doing now which mm -hmm. kind of leads me on to Let's skip a big section and just talk about where you're at now in your career and what kind of gigs you're doing now and where in the world you're doing those gigs. You know, it's your time to big yourself up, really. Oh, gosh, <laughs> that's my least favourite thing. But no, um, yeah, fast forward, fast forwarding a good few years, don't don't get it wrong. Well, um, I'm going to work back from here. So tell us where you're at now and then we'll yeah, figure out so how you got from there to here. At the minute, it's great touring the UK with with probably one of the biggest bigger hip hop touring brands in the UK, Apple Boom. Uh, so we start from Edinburgh, make our way down to Bournemouth, doing every city in between pretty much. So that's pretty cool. That's the nice. UK side. Um, I do other bits and bobs in the north of England, little guest bookings on a weekend throughout the UK, London, Birmingham, even Cardiff and bits and bobs everywhere, which is great. And then um, summer times mean... Um, being able to go sort of back and forth from like Marbella and Ibiza um, and the party islands and then winter times so just more recently have been allowing me to go and do gigs in Dubai and we I think all of us we all go to Rise Festival in, yep. the, in the Alps yeah yep. um, it's like a ski festival that's always a a laugh and a joke, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> Just a yeah, so yeah, that's where I'm at. At the so minute. literally, DJing has now you've got to that dream of it's taking you around the world, and you know you're playing for some big brands, you're playing for large audiences. I've seen on your Instagram you're playing on some center stages, like full audience looking at you up on a stage, you know, rocking a crowd, working the microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> your, heart, nice. your heart's beating. You're still there <laughs> where you get those nerves. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it looks great on Instagram. Just quickly tell everyone where they can find you on Instagram so they can check out these yeah. videos. So it's at DJ Joe Labelle. Uh, Labelle is spelled L-O-B-E-L -E for everyone wondering. Yeah, man. Go, go follow this guy and check out those videos. So let's let's now kind of work back and forward a little bit. You were a resident DJ quite a few years ago and, you know, you had that break and now you're touring around the world with bigger brands. How did it go from A to B? How did it get from there to here? Should we break uh, it down even more? Yeah, I think we need to break it down okay. even more because it's a very long process. <laughs> so do you want to talk about brands first? Maybe talk about Apple Boom yeah. or Yeah, so in terms of in terms of the hip hop stuff that I mentioned where we tour the tour the UK. Well, we do bits in, in Europe and stuff as well, but mainly the UK. It's a student brand, but kind of unique in the fact that it, it doesn't follow like a weekly pattern, like, you know, every week every week on a Wednesday it's this night. It's not like that. We do yeah. One-off events are sort of key dates throughout term um, throughout the UK. Um, so in terms of getting involved with them, it was, again, it's it a bit of a networking thing, really. It's contacts that I'd made through my residencies as, a, as I got sort of more and more, as I perfected my craft more and more. I didn't want to say as I got better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but as, as you perfect your craft more and more, um, you know, you start to build relationships with the people that you work with week in, week out, I'd say. Um, and so, yeah, you guys all know, like you, you do a residency with someone every week. 
eventually they're get, you, if if you're good and you're always on time, you're always professional and everything you do is correct, you know, eventually that you're going to become their go-to guy. So when this hip hop brand came along and and someone I've been working with for a while, shout out Mikey, um <laughs> decided to get involved in the hip hop company, um it was only natural then he, he said, "Oh, why don't you ever try it playing one of these? So I'll, I'll forward your name to to their director." Nice. Played one, and then he he literally pretty much just signed me off and just said, "Right, um, can you do like fine? Can you just do all of them? Can you do, like, can, you do can you do this 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 in this date?" And I was like, "Okay," and it's been like that since. So it just shows you 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 must have been the perfect person for that brand at that time, and it it just. The stars aligned in a way, but if if you hadn't have grafted with other companies and other relationships prior to that, you wouldn't have just fallen into that role. It was kind of there was these steps that you made your way up to the next level to the next level. Um, do you still work with the brand that sort of passed you through to that? Yeah, that I do. Company yeah. and yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, so they, not forgetting they're, they're those all, ties as well. No, not forgetting those guys at all. They're all they're all under one umbrella now. So. The hip hop touring brand called Apple Boom, they they're one sort of fork, and they've got a, a house and disco brand as well called Triple yeah. Cooks, and that's another fork. And then they have all their all, still all, still all their student weeklies, which yeah, yeah. Uh, one of which I play for. For um, I mean, for it just goes to show plan. as well if you can get yourself in there with a company that is growing themselves. We spoke about this previously on yeah. on on the podcast that that where that can take you further you know if if that company is growing they're going to go back to their reliable resourceful djs that they trust and go okay come with us on this journey it's the start of a journey but then that can grow into something even bigger and that means you end up in ibiza playing did you play ibiza rocks for apple bum yeah Ushuaia as Ushuaia. well Ushuaia. 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 <laughs> so i know you know our podcast <laughs> listeners are all over the world but the mecca that is ibiza we'll, they'll probably know some of these Pretty names sure everyone knows Ushuaia by now yeah yeah so congratulations i've got to say thanks yeah. you know it's Crazy. it's amazing to see um the progression and yes it's taken a few years but you know you haven't stopped and you've managed to go from resident dj now to more guest dj do you think that the other bookings you're getting that aren't part of Apple Bum, do you think Apple Bum has really helped in that because you've been able to build something out of playing for them? Or do you think you've done something sidelined to that that's really helped with other guest bookings? Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's definitely helped. I mean, it can't, it, it, how can it harm, you know, the, yeah. <laughs> if, if a promoter looks on your profile and you're playing, shout out to the guys at Apple Bum because they've been putting on sold out shows up and down the UK for like, past however many years so if you know if a promoter hears my name because i've been in their city recently and then looks on my instagram and sees 15 videos or pictures of me playing in like rammed out venues of yeah. course like that's that's <laughs> of course yeah, that was that was helpful um but then alongside that i was also working away at my own stuff and it was back in back in the period when i don't really know whether it is so much now but when facebook advertising used to be i mean you used to just yeah you sort of pound spent to return was just crazy like yeah. I, I didn't yeah. have to spend much to make a video really really blow up it was just a video of me doing a little wordplay routine mm. yeah. um and i did one of those it was like a i don't know like a two minute long video mm. perhaps one tune into into the sort of three tunes in total yeah, yeah. But um, I don't know how much it even was. Like not not what something that I'd warrant. Not even not even a whole gig's wage or anything. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and and just put that on a video, and it ended up going. Which back then was quite for me. It got like a hundred thousand views or something, and, then, yeah. and like a f good few likes, and people commenting and sharing it, and tagging promoters and things in it. Mm. And just off the back of that, I got a, what I'd probably say was my first proper guest booking. You know where you where you go down and yeah. you have your face on a mm. flyer and it's all a bit, yeah. <laughs> all a bit weird. <laughs> but um, that was, yeah, so it was pretty much off the back of that. I'm obviously not denying anything else I was doing would have helped because they would have checked me out and seen all of that was going on as well. Yeah. But, but yeah. I think so that's going into marketing now. Um, you know, one of the questions I always like to ask people is how essential do you think social media is in the success of a DJ nowadays? Um, and in the, in, and, and how vital is it in your career? Like, do you use it religiously? Do you use it as a marketing tool to help you get more bookings? I'm bad for it. I, I, I am, I'm glued to my phone. Like yeah. uh, everything, everything work-wise, a lot of it happens through Instagram. Mm. From, I'd, I'd say Instagram like it would be sort of the platform that promoters would use to contact me, the platform I'd use to contact promoters. And right. 
things like that. So I do 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 a lot on there, which which means you know putting up videos, editing little graphics about where I'm playing, and you know all these little yeah, things yeah, that yeah. you do. So yeah, you're building your brand uh, yeah, on that platform. Yeah, I would say it's very important. So you're talking important. about videos and pictures and things that you put up. Do you have um, videographers or photographers that you employ or that follow you, or do you just kind of get stuff from events? videographers and things like or do you have you physically gone out there and employed people before uh, yeah i have yeah definitely have before um i wouldn't say i did it every gig but yeah it, it, it would be a mixture of if i know something something that's gonna look great is coming up yeah um, b- believe i'm taking a videographer or photographer with me yeah. to shout about it um if not you know yeah there's always I've, I've built up relationships with a lot of videographers and photographers inside clubs that I, yeah. you know that are there weekly or whatever and i'll be like oh it's you again oh, if, you, if you get any good videos can you email them to this yeah, yeah. i might give yeah. chuck them chuck them a few quid but um yeah definitely i'm always always trying to get content if not then i've got my uh, you know my own stuff and i'll just give a camera to a promoter yeah, yeah. or a friend i'll be like yeah. mate this is about to this is about to go off you better film this yeah. <laughs> like just but that's something you can do so easily now and so, so well easy. like the cameras on, phone. on phones yeah. is just ridiculous so you're passing that and if you're recording you say you've got like a full like 4K video is yeah. It's mental. It's just so easy. I mean, how do you decide though? Like, if you were to um, like book someone to to come and video your set or or take pictures, obviously that costs. So do you weigh it up? Like, think I'm getting X amount for a gig. Is it worth, you know, half of that? Is it worth? How do you kind of figure that out? Because you've got to think about, you know, you're earning money as a DJ, but you've actually got to re reinvest back in yourself. Yeah. You know, is there a line where do you, do you literally look at your life and think, well, I've got X amount for marketing, I've got X amount for living, I've got, or is it just kind of take it gig by gig and hope for the best? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just running around like a headless chicken. Who knows? Who knows if I'll be able to eat tonight? Um, <laughs> oh, my card declined. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Got work tomorrow. Should be fine. Um, no, I, I do. Yeah, I, I, I think, to be fair, the, for me, some of the, some of the highest paid um, of my gigs perhaps won't be the ones that will be the best that will reflect the best on yeah, a video because yeah. they because maybe it'll be in a sort of a bit of a she she uh, for a want of a better word you know like quite a what people would say was like a prestige club and yeah, uh, yeah. people might not want to shake a leg even in there so yeah. it's not going to be very good on video or yeah. anything like that so yeah so yeah fair enough <laughs> it's always the dirty raves isn't it where you get the best footage exactly yes, yeah yeah some of the some of the sort of bookings that I might do weekly or something, or, you know, little bits and bobs, student gigs and things, they'll be the ones where people are going absolutely off. Yeah. So. so these more prestigious events where they're, you know, more higher paid gigs, is there anyone, any ones that you remember really like standout gigs that you think, how am I playing for this <laughs> event or this person or what, you know, is there anything that you can tell the listener that... I have to tread carefully, obviously, as, okay. a, as, a, <laughs> as a, because of the brands I work with. But yeah, um, no, you just find that at some of these at some of these shows, you know, you think are they like private parties or are they? No, they're like events, corporate events and things. Some sometimes, you know, that you so I have one side of my work which is the crazy sort of student world. People yeah. are getting the club; they're already, you know, half full of alcohol and yeah. and they're just ready to just go crazy. And yeah. you know, you play the tunes, it's old tunes, new tunes, whatever, and they'll just go off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, at the crowds at these other events that this they're still weekly events maybe, but I might just get invited down once every two months or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> the crowds there, they, you know, they're perhaps perhaps higher on their priority list is to to remain sort of quite looking quite cool and yeah, looking yeah, yeah, quite yeah, yeah. you know funky. So they're they're not they're not about to start not about a rave no. running around the dance floor doing knee slides they, you know, they're, <laughs> stood, they're stood with their friends on a little table with yeah, a bottle of yeah. alcohol with a sparkler hanging out of it so how do your sets change obviously that's two very different audiences two very different markets but you're djing for both of those markets so how it does the music change if the music doesn't change how does it ch- how does your set change when you deliver to both of those audiences yeah the, uh, the music i wouldn't say changes that much i'm i'm playing mainly hip-hop uh, for want of a better term, urban umbrella music um, at mm. these events, and um, so yeah, I wouldn't say that I wouldn't say that changes that much because that is in yep. essence what I'm a, what I'm supposed to be about. So um, yeah, that doesn't change too much, but the style maybe changes very slightly. I mean, the student world is 
high paced, high energy. Yeah, yeah. Tunes are coming in and out mm. very quickly. Yeah. And if people are sat around the table with, you know, with a, with a bottle of alcohol, that might not be what they'd enjoy. So, so you just let tracks play a bit longer, let maybe. Play a bit longer, do some do cool things in other ways, right? Yeah, than. yeah. Um, I've seen you do a lot of mic work. The last last thing here before we just segment off, but I've seen you do a lot of mic work at these student gigs. When did you start picking up a microphone, and how vital do you think it is to your show? Yeah, not not too long ago. As I like, I mean, we've we've grown up playing together. Yeah, yeah. We some shows um, in Leeds, um, and I w- it would have been the last thing I'd have thought to have done back then. But um, I think probably I did I did a season when about. Four years ago, um, in a party island called Malia, yep. and it it was the kind of place that you just you just couldn't not you know you had to, mm. you had to pick up a microphone. Everyone, all the clubs expected the DJs to do it. The punters expected the DJs to do it. Yep. and it was kind of just like three stuff in the deep end. Yeah, really. learn now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've seen people do it. Just just do it. Yeah. I I put, I've said this previously on the podcast, but I took a gig purpose purposefully to learn how to use a microphone yeah. in the past i thought i'm gonna throw myself in the deep end then and i bought myself a microphone and thought this i need to learn how to use this tool mm-hmm. <laughs> you yeah, know yeah it's, definitely um it is, it is so do you feel tool. much more confident now are you still kind of finding your way with a microphone yeah i mean I, I i work with a lot of hosts who come in and they you know they get paid separately to do it yeah, and, yeah. and when i hear them i'm thinking you're good. You, you guys are the yeah. yeah you guys yeah. do this for a reason. Like, yeah, yeah, you're good yeah. at this. I'm nowhere near. But that. have you picked up some tricks from them? For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Uh, there's a guy mm. called Kirby. He's one of the residents at um, yeah, Ibiza the Rocks, and he's a great host. And he is. I've 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 done countless shows of him, hundred, two hundred shows, you know, a year. Yeah. Just um, uh, for the past few years, just back and forth, me DJ and him. You know, he's got to the point where he knows what I'm going to do. I've got to the point where I know what he's going to do, and, yep. and I've learned so much watching as well. Yeah. From, nice. from a couple of the hosts I work with, yeah. All right, let's switch it. Tune of the week. Okay, tune of the week. So has it, has everyone quick. got a tune of the week? Get your get your <laughs> Spotify, Spotify out quick, quick every week. Okay, Joe, have you got some? Have you got one in your head already? Yeah. So I think we should probably just hit the thing again and cut this. <laughs> no, 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 no. We never cut it. Um, <laughs> let's um, figure out what I actually jump like. in Spotify. Uh, you've got one. Yeah, I've got a couple, always. Go. Cool. Right, you Where go then. So, oh, okay, this is, yeah, okay, I say it, do I? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I've got, I did a bit of a controversial one, because I know that um, Mr. Kanye West yeah. has been in and out yeah, of positive and negative spotlight for the past few years. Yeah. But I have to say that I think, for me, when I'm driving, there's a tune called Follow God. Yeah, yeah, and it's just the instrument, it, instrumental. The it's just like old school, yay, and I'm just yeah. so happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that that's probably be mine at the minute. Yeah. Nice. We were just watching that airport karaoke with James Corden oh, yeah. oh, yesterday. Me and, so good. me and Amazing. Danny in the studio. It's yeah. class. Like I've got to say though, like for everything with Kanye, like to bring out a very gospel album it's you know even if you're not spiritual at least there's some there's a big positive message in bringing out music that you know is is praising something positive at the end of the yeah. day you know there's so yeah. many other rappers that maybe go down another avenue and to, to bring something like that out and yeah and to, exactly. to but everyone it. like loves him for it as well like even the <laughs> people that you do see preaching the bad like say oh my god Kanye is amazing for doing this so yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah he's just it's loved by everyone well. yeah. it's yeah. good music yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. helps <laughs> do you think this album's going to stand the test of time do you think it's going to be one that we go back to or do you think it's going to be one that gets dropped i don't think it's as strong as his early stuff no. personally no. but like there's yeah. a, there's always these things that you see online of people being like oh what's the best kanye album and yeah. it's, it's quite hard to nail that down but uh, i always find myself with kanye anyways. that maybe he is a bit ahead of his time you always go back yeah yeah you do back to I the agree. albums yeah. like it's always a year later suddenly i'm like Right, this is now amazing, and I don't know. There's something weird about it. Maybe yeah. he's just a bit ahead. It's of like the he's time not human. Or... He is. <laughs> I mean, like him or not, he is. He is a bit of a pioneer in in a few different, a few different industries. Like yeah. Yeah, his yeah, fashion yeah. is. Yeah, but it's just a bit crazy. What's your favorite Kanye tune? Oh, this, this is the oh, hardest question for anyone. This is the hardest you question. Can't just say you're, that. A, you're a hip hop <laughs> DJ, and you play to a lot of urban crowds. That obviously, <sighs> you must right, draw so for a lot. Top three. That's that's. All right. What your what's your top reaction Kanye tune that you would play in a club? Oh, God. And what's your personal like go to little That's gold digger. top reaction tunes? Yeah, it's a bit, it's probably a toss up between stronger and gold digger. Gold digger yeah. But then what about so Touch the Sky? 
Uh, nah, so this is what happens every time favorite. you think there's like oh <laughs> I've got this and then you throw another one in the works it's like oh god I think gold yeah. digger every time because it doesn't matter what, what crowd you got in front of you everyone knows it yeah. Yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, okay mine is dawn wall and holding on it's like oh, a drum and bass too. tune just a vibe yeah um, is it new? I'm holding on to my freedom. Yeah, this this, this yeah. isn't your favorite Kanye yeah. tune, by the no, way. No, this no, is no. your tune. We've just, 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 just sliced Kanye right. off and we're moving on. So. Yeah. <laughs> right, Danny, um, go. Mine is, it's not a new tune, but Santeria by Pusha T. Kanye producer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well. Kanye, like, I'm just, I was listening to it yesterday and it's just like, yeah, tune of the week, definitely. Mine's Lose Control, the new Medusa one. It sounds the exact same as the last Medusa one, but thankfully for them, that was an absolute banger. So this one bangs as well. I literally only, because I don't play that kind of music, so I literally downloaded that this morning. I'm doing a gig later that requires perhaps needing some music. And I listened to it and I was like, is this I've heard this before. So we will just rename the title. It doesn't go, da 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 It goes, da 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 I'm like, yeah, yeah. It's like the producer's gone, well, the last time worked, so copy, paste. It's like, copy my homework, but don't make it look too obvious. Yeah, exactly. Fair enough. Okay, so let's get back to it. Joe, um, on this podcast, obviously, we're a DJ school and we talk a lot about equipment and things. Now, I know you, uh, you're pretty much setting your ways on, on the equipment that you use. Um, do you want to let everyone know? Because we usually ask people, like, what is your favorite piece of DJ equipment? But, I mean, do you want to let everyone know what your go-to setup is, what you play on in a club? Yeah, um, I'd say if, if I'm playing my hip-hop stuff, which I usually am. Uh, I mean, very occasionally, I'll play house music gigs just on the side for, for a bit of, of a passion project, and I'll just use a USB uh, record box. And and But but in the main, I'm playing with uh, just a MacBook on Serato, DVS, with a, still with a Rain SL3. Wow. Strong. Yep. <laughs> Strong. <laughs> Strong. Man. Yeah, I know. Got the SL3. My, my SL3 still works. Mine, Mine's still mine, going. Mine 12 years every, later. Yeah, they are literally like bomb-proof. Mine exactly. gets used every week. Good. Yeah. 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 Big up the SL for it. Yeah, shout um, out to Rain. How did you fall into using Serato? Was it... You, um, what, what made you choose Serato back when you did? I wouldn't even know. I think it was probably just a, what my friends would have been using, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think one yeah. of my friends had like an SL1, it would have been. Yeah, the SL1. So, uh, you know, it was yeah, heavier than the laptop. One. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so... Uh, I think one of them would have, would have had one of those and said, oh, look, this is what you need to get, get one of those. I think I got an SL2. It yeah. felt really smart, uh, you know, because I got the sort of smaller, newer one when I realised you couldn't record through it and all of yeah. that stuff. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, so I've just stuck with that. Forever. Have you played on many newer controllers? Have you played and touched anything that's 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 kind of controller-based recently? Um, not really. Sometimes I'll just pop my head into a DJ shop and I'll have a little, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Have a little play around, not like you guys, obviously. <laughs> touching every piece of new equipment that comes out but yeah, um literally but yeah <laughs> but yeah no not really i yeah. like the look of that one that used to be for record box and now is for serato with oh, the, the SL1000 yeah, 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 yeah. so yeah. good i'll go on that later lads maybe yep. Yep. yeah well of course, <laughs> yeah. of course we've just still uh, in the box actually we haven't opened we've got yeah. a new one just <laughs> to, new one. just to, before anyone gets confused like how do you make the video if you've not got one <laughs> uh, we gave one away we had to send one back to pioneer and then after we've giving one. after giving one away and sending ours back, we found out they'd sold out. And we were like, oh dear, we, we don't have, have one. one. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, we gave away ours. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we just got a new one. So yeah, you can you can be first to touch it if you thank like. You. Oh, thank you. Go. That'll be my honour. Um, okay, so we, we like to try and give as much advice as possible to the listener. Um, in your experience, what would be your best advice for a beginner DJ out there? Maybe a DJ that's, that's in the bedroom still. Um, the first thing is just, I'd say just get as good as you can. Like yeah. <laughs> there's so many people make the mistake of, I think it's a lot easier to do it now as well with social media and, yep, yep. and, 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 cl- and sort of even just the economy, people, people trying to save money on DJs and things. I think there's a lot of, yeah. a lot of times people go out before they're ready. Yep. I, yeah. I'd, I'd say, I'd, I'd just say, just get, just perfect it. Like get yeah. as good as you possibly can. Before. Like don't, don't run before you can walk. Exactly. Yep. And like, yeah. like what Joe was saying earlier, you know, the, the house parties and things like that, you're going to get honest, critical feedback from your friends more than you're going to get it from other people. You know, people that can tell you the truth. And I learned a lot when I did a similar kind of thing, you know, going to mates houses and, and clanging a few mixes and doing this wrong and doing that. And people go, no, oh, mate, come on. Yeah. Like, you know, whereas if you go out and Fresh do that in a club, you're not, you're not going to get a call back to do that mm-hmm. again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like, 
learn learn your craft before you start running out. Okay, so then when when do people? Because at the same time, you don't want people to think that they're never good enough to go and play out and oh, constantly no, no, be getting no. to a point like, oh, I can no. always be a bit better. I can always be a bit better. So when do you then decide That's true. that you're yeah, but like just ready. That's true. I That's mean, I think. <laughs> <Boing. laughs> I've been playing the mic stand. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think. I think you definitely need to. You need to sort of. Oh, I've lost my train of thought because he was playing guitar on the mic stand. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, when are you ready to go out yeah. and play clubs? Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, you can't just wait forever until you're the yeah. Scratch Master Three Thousand champion of yeah. the world. But, but I, I think you need to have the basics, like. Yep down and you need to know your equipment well enough that if something goes wrong you know how to handle it yeah. Yeah. and etc i think you just need to you know make sure that and you're like club joe proof. said earlier joe, joe did say that his friends were recommending him and, and yep. people were getting to know him yeah obviously you're doing something right if people are then speaking about you before you've even gone out to do yep big gigs so you know i, I don't want to put people off going out when they when they feel they're ready yeah. not all yeah. but at the same time i do think there is like joe said at the moment in the club scene, there's a lot of people are emerging very fast and then disappearing very fast. Yeah. Probably because they just didn't take that a little bit longer to perfect the the professional side of it, like Joe mm -hmm. said, with mastering your equipment, with knowing how to adapt to different setups. So, you know, yeah. not just showing up and going, where do I plug in my controller? I'm confused. What yeah, yeah. is this? I'm looking unprofessional. Just learning the absolute basics of what needs to be done properly and then approaching it in a more professional manner than running into it yeah. too quickly and making yourself yeah. look a bit of a chimp. I yeah. feel another way of being ready is like now you have <clears throat> things like SoundCloud that you can just you know send links to and then like I think if your SoundCloud starts to get a bit of traction like you know you're doing something right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think when you, your mixes are doing all right and I mean you're not going to be getting hundreds of thousands of players and stuff but if they start doing all right and you're getting good feedback from it I think it's a good thing to be yeah. like all right maybe I am ready now. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, nice. Um, so then, switching it, what's your best piece of advice for the working DJ or the the the, the advanced DJ, someone that you know is is doing this full time anyway? Um, and I, there's so many DJs like that that I'm sort of in my friendship circle or you know the people that I know of, and and they they'll say like, um, they'll they'll play sort of week in week out. They might play five nights a week and. They're, and and I might only play three nights a week at some point, but that but they'll be really interested in maybe just doing like a one off gig at a club, which right. is like some of the sometimes what I do on the weekends. And like, how do you get to that point where you go from I'm just playing weekly to to like a club actually wanting you to come and yeah. and going down going down to a different city and getting in a hotel and all that stuff? Yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. exciting to start with. Um, so so I think a bit of advice on that maybe. Um, go for it. Content yep. is my number one, I think. Mm -hmm. You've just got to be... There's so many DJs I know that are awesome and they're just... They have an Instagram that they don't really use, a Facebook yeah. they don't really use, yeah. and they might text people and ask, oh, can you can you uh, put my name forward to this person? And it's yeah. just like, just give me something. Like, have, yep. you, mm -hmm. have, you got a, have you got content anywhere? Can I, can I... Can someone type in your name on Instagram, for example, find you, or it could be the same on SoundCloud, Facebook, anything. Could, could yeah. someone type your name in look at it, work out exactly what you do and yeah. and see if you, you could, you know, you're going to provide value or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, definitely. So I think that's, that's really important. That's a good Focus one. On that content. content. Yeah. To yeah. kind of bridge that gap from resident to guest, there needs to be more than just your DJ skills there really, because yeah. you know, yeah. your DJ skills are already being used as a resident DJ. So then there's also the, the, just a side note that you, you did touch on there, Joe, that when people ask you, don't be afraid to ask. You know, if you yeah, see yeah. someone doing something cool, yeah, yeah. sure, and you're like, I want a slice of that, don't be cocky about it. But asking, reaching out, and you're never too good to reach out and ask other people, yeah, for, yeah. for a lift yeah. up. And and I think we all have worked with other people in the industry, and we've all had a word and gone, oh, I'd love to do a gig like that. Everyone has done it who's yeah, got yeah. somewhere and don't be afraid to ask because yeah. you never know who might be looking for a DJ but they've not thought to ask of you yet. So. Yeah. And also just to add that uh, what, I've, what I've sort of worked out or learned recently, more quite recently in the last year or so is that at the, at the top of these brands, you know, if, if you look at, so my, my, my target is to go to some of the sort of prestigious brands in the UK. If you look at the tops of those brands, there's perhaps three or four guys that just, either run them all and they all know each other and everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you realize yeah. how small the circles are. Yeah, so yeah. 
again, obviously everyone sounds a bit cliche, like network, 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 but you, you but yeah. literally can play for one of those brands and yeah, then you get booked for, for yeah. all of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's true. Because clubs, clubs copy what other clubs are doing as well. You've so. got to learn about the, the gigs that you want to be doing the guest bookings for eventually and things and the, these bigger venues. You've got to learn, well, who are the people that book at these DJs and, and who are the who are the people that are running the show really, you yeah, know? Yeah. And, and how does that process happen? Yeah, you know, I, look I, at other guest DJs. Why are they getting booked? And is there something they're doing that you're not doing? You know, hundred so. percent. I spend I spend so long on Instagram just sort of finding. Okay, so that person runs that party. I'll, yeah. I'll give him a little follow, like his latest picture. Maybe he'll look at my profile back, and then he, mm-hmm. maybe he does, and then he looks and he likes a couple of things, yeah, and then he yeah, follows yeah, me no. back. And I do that if I do that to forty, fifty different people. You know, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, eventually yeah. someone's going to yeah, see. Nice. So, nice. So, sure, yeah. yeah. Right. Let's switch it. Story time. Uh, Joe's been really nervous about this segment. Here we go. <laughs> He's like, I've got, I'm, I'm I've worried got... I'm going to throw someone under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, do it. you can you can just call people Joe Blog. Yeah, yeah. We won't, we won't refer to them. So anymore. I have got a little story, guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're playing um we're playing at a club in Leeds in England, and um, one of my friends who remain unnamed uh, was bursting to go to the toilet. <laughs> number one um that is the that is the wee one isn't it yes yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he was bursting to go to the toilet and um the club was sold out i think we we're in the middle of freshers and you like he could have got to the toilet but it, i think you know time yeah. would have run out uh, so problem. he decided to um uh, so some little bit of background knowledge smoke machine <laughs> Smoke machines in clubs, their fluid comes in these big five litre bottles, sort of five litre white <laughs> cartons. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, so once, once obviously that's been put inside the smoke machine, you've just got yourself a nice empty little um, carton, five litre yeah. toilet, or a five <laughs> litre toilet. Yeah. And so yeah, uh, one of our friends picked up the picked up the five litre toilet and used it as such and and screwed the lid back on i was thinking right make sure we get that at the end and we chuck it in the bin. <laughs> but he in his drunken state just put it back down in the pile with the other smoke machine fluids next to the smoke machine <laughs> so obviously um oh dear when we went back the following week we'd found out that the following night um, somebody had filled up the smoke machine with said I, I wonder, fluid. I wonder which DJ that was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Uh. <laughs> oh gosh, who knows? But um, yeah, <laughs> they filled, filled up the smoke machine with this, you know, new fluid, and then just <laughs> sprayed ammonia into, ammonia into, the, into right, it. I'm just going to say that I have been the DJ that's been on the other side of that. <laughs> Where I've been the guy playing in the club, and that's happened to me. The sound tech guy will come in, fill up the smoke machine. Next minute, you've got an empty room, and you've never smelled anything as bad in your life. Oh. It's the worst. Like, I bet a few people listening have had similar experiences. I feel like yeah. it's not I, isolated. I I did something very similar, but not with um, bodily fluids. Um, <laughs> we we had. I hope uh, it wasn't bodily solids. <laughs> <laughs> No, we, uh, uh, mine was much more dangerous, actually. We stuck um, pine floor cleaner in the smoke oh machine. The, uh, oh, the, they'd had a delivery, and the, the, the <laughs> like, guy who just, like, looks after the bar, you know, cleans it up in the day and gets it ready for the next night, um, just saw the bottles and assumed they were smoke fluid because they came in the exact same set bottles, but it was actually, like, industrial grade cleaning fluid Ooh. and i shoved that in the smoke machine wow and uh wow well, wow <laughs> many people died good, that yeah. Yeah. good luck to that venue in their upcoming lawsuit the venue's, uh, yeah the venue's yeah. no and longer moving there. on <laughs> that, was, uh, that was a smell right so we're coming to the end of this week's podcast off the record i just want to say a huge huge thank you to joe labelle for stopping by and imparting all that wisdom i think it's been very insightful um before we do just finish up uh what's what's next what have you got you know you mentioned you're kind of looking at some bigger brands or more prestigious brands in the uk like what 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 are you working towards have you got any ideas um what's next for you i'm never happy with what i've got <laughs> i don't know if that's a good thing or a no, bad it's, thing but it's not a bad thing yeah i'm just i i i, I get to you know I'll, I'll set a goal 
okay, I want to play at this venue. I want to play for this person. And then you get there and it's like, literally as soon as I've done that one, I'm yeah. like, right, okay, what's next? What am yeah. I going to do now? So yeah. I don't know. Just see where it takes you. Just, yeah, keep going, I guess. Would see. you ever consider doing like DJing for an artist eventually? Like being a, a touring DJ with an artist? Yeah, I guess possibly. Uh, I know it's a great way to boost your profile. Um, mm. That's true. But... I also kind of like just knocking away at it on my own and just yeah, building yeah. up my own name rather than you can you can run the. Ri- I mean, there's people that haven't. You know, you've got like Charlesy and stuff who, yeah. who's managed yeah, to do yeah. amazing things on his own, but um, you re- can run the risk of being oh, that's Joe blah blah blah's DJ and yeah, 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 yeah it's, yeah, it's yeah, stopping sure. there. So yeah. I, I'm not set on it. If the right artist and opportunity came along, I probably would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. TLM was saying a similar thing. How he's got this two sides to him where people know him as this artist DJ yep. but then he's got his own thing and I think it's like boosted his profile by two by having those yeah, two sides yeah, yeah. so I can see the positive and negative to it but yeah. nice yeah. well thanks again for listening everyone and watching if you're on YouTube if you've got any questions obviously drop them in the comments below let us know if you enjoyed this week's podcast and as ever follow us on Instagram at we are crossfader check out the website we are crossfader.co.uk you can sign up and check out the forums in there and and leave some suggestions for future podcasts or even questions for upcoming guests and make sure to leave us a rating on iTunes it really helps if you use well, Apple what's it called now Apple Podcasts Apple Podcasts iTunes think, has been yeah. binned hasn't it yeah it's gone iTunes <laughs> RIP iTunes so yeah Apple Podcasts um, and give us a follow on Spotify Podcasts as well if you're listening there thanks again catch you in a bit take it easy bye see you Oh yeah.